Hello everyone. Now today we're looking at velocity time graph and we want to understand different types or different representations of velocity time graph. And so before we begin, let's quickly just give a brief definition for what a velocity time graph is. And a velocity time graph shows the relationship between the velocity or speed of an object and the time of travel. What we're going to focus on today are different types of motions that can be represented using velocity time graph. And so one of those motions will be constant or uniform velocity. We're also going to look at graphs that represent acceleration, or we're going to specifically look at uniform acceleration. We're going to look at deceleration, and we're also going to finish up with increasing and decreasing acceleration. Right, so let's start off with our constant velocity time graph. But before I start, I just want to point out something real quick that the y-axis represents velocity while the x-axis represents time. And so a constant velocity as the word constant, and I want to also point out that constant velocity is the same thing as uniform velocity, which simply means that the velocity is not changing regardless of the time. So therefore, we have a straight line in the horizontal position. So what this, is, what this means, whatever the velocity is at the start of this line is the velocity at the end of this line. So therefore, we can represent some quantities here. So we have um, u equal to v, which means the initial and the final speed or velocity will be the same. So therefore, u represents initial velocity, which means the starting velocity. So the start of this line and the end of the line, which is the final velocity, is the same. A matter of fact, along this line, the entire line, the velocity is the same. All right, now let's look at acceleration. Now acceleration is the increase in velocity over time, right? And so therefore, the graph will look like this, which means... As you increase on the y-axis, you also increase on the x-axis. So let's look at this in terms of putting some numbers in play. And so here, our, uni our initial velocity, which is the starting velocity, which means the start of this line is 0. And the end of this line is 3 meters per second. Now, just quickly point out that the, the velocity there, the end of the line is 3 meters per second. And this will cover this speed in three seconds, which is a time. So let's, let's mark that on the graph. And so to calculate acceleration, acceleration is given as V minus U over T. And rem remember that V is the final velocity and U is the initial velocity. So therefore, what we'll get here is that A, which is acceleration, is equal to 3 minus 0. 3 being the final velocity and um, 0 is the initial velocity divided by 3 which is the time taken for all of that um, movement and so therefore our acceleration will be 1 meters per second 1 meter per second squared now let's look at deceleration a deceleration is a decrease in velocity over time so the graph will look like this so what, what this means, as velocity is decreasing, on that which is on the y-axis, on the x-axis, it is increasing. So over time, the velocity is actually getting lower and lower. All right, so once the velocity is dropping, then we have deceleration. All right, so how to look at this is that the initial velocity for this line, which means the start of this line, is 3 meters per second. And the end of this line on the y-axis is 0 meters per second. So we're going to say that u is 3 and the final velocity for this green line here is 0 meters per second. This motion it was done in a time of 3 seconds. So it moves from this point or uh, from this point all the way over here, all the way here. So that is 3 seconds of travel. And deceleration is calculated just as acceleration. However, um, deceleration is a negative acceleration. So let's do it by calculation and so you will see how this work out. And so therefore here, it is calculated by say V minus U over T does the same. 
and v in this case is zero so zero minus three over three which give us negative one meters per second square so notice the negative value means that the velocity is decreasing or the object or um, the motion is in a deceleration state now let's look at increasing acceleration so increasing acceleration is a steeper graph so therefore you'd have a curve and so along this path the veloc each velocity will uh, will actually have a different acceleration so let's take some numbers here and play again so acceleration is calculated as v over t right so let's look at when the speed or the velocity was two meters per second and say this time was approximately there 1.8 so therefore it'll be 2 divided by 1.8 which is a time and give us 1.1 meters per second but if we go higher on the graph so for example let's look at 3 meters per second and this time will be about 2 seconds and so if we find the acceleration here it will be um, 3 divided by 2 which gives us 1.5 so you notice as you go up the graph the acceleration is increasing so the acceleration here is not uniform as that straight line we have before all right let's look at the last type of graph here which is decreasing acceleration again this will be a curve but notice how the curve is is going towards the right and so which means as you go up in velocity it eventually start to taper it off or decreasing and so let's put some numbers here to prove this type of graph that that acceleration is actually decreasing. So remember, the formula for acceleration is velocity over time. And so let's put some numbers here as an example. So for two meters per second, that will be a time of about 0 0.5 seconds. And so therefore two divided by 0 0.5, which give us four meters per second squared. And let's put another value there, which is over three meters per second as our velocity. And this will be in a time of about two seconds. So therefore acceleration is v over t which means 3 divided by 2 which is 1.5 but notice as you go up the, gr um, the graph or the line the value the value for um, acceleration is start getting lower and lower so the values are dropping all right so this is pretty much a short lesson and describing different types of motions that you can have on a velocity time graph and so at the end of it, and I want to tell you that I appreciate you watching these lessons as always. And please remember that you are a worthy creation. So stay safe, stay blessed until we meet again.